Okay, so uh, so what did we do last time? We worked over algebraically closed field, K. Okay. We defined uh, symmetric tensor categories over K and the subclass of those, which was called Tanakian category. And these are categories uh, that uh, there exists a fiber functor from C to the category of vector spaces over K. If this functor is unique up to a unique, up to a non-unique isomorphism, uh, and uh, we can take its automorphisms as a tensor functor. So this is an exact uh, monoidal uh, functor from C to vector K, and we have this affine group scheme, and uh, and then uh, C is equivalent to representation category of G, the category of finite dimensional representations of this affine group scheme. And the question is, is this a proper inclusion? Are there other symmetric tensor categories? And I already said last time that the answer is yes. Uh, uh, and namely, we have the category of super vector spaces. So new example, the category of super vector spaces over K. And uh, as a tensor category, without braiding, it is simply uh, the category of uh, representations. So in this case, I want to take characteristic of K not equal to two. Uh, and uh, so we have representations uh, over uh, K of uh, Z mod two. Or you can say that this is the category of vector spaces graded by Z mod two. Just a vector space. So it consists of vector spaces V, which is uh, V zero plus V one. And this is the even part. And this is the odd part. Finite dimensional spaces like this with the usual tensor product. Uh, but the braiding uh, is different. So the symmetric braiding uh, is the following that uh, if X belongs to V M, and y belongs to Vn, then C acting on X tensor with Y is not the usual flip Y tensor X, but there is a sign minus one to the power Mn. So the only uh, difference from the usual case is when both M and N are one, so both X and Y are odd. In this case, what C does is not only flips them, but also multiplies by minus one. And this is very familiar to us um, when we consider, uh, you know, exterior forms on the vector space or cohomology. So this all uh, arises in mathematics very often, objects of this category. And um, I claim that, uh, that the category of super vector spaces is not Tanakian. And in order to prove this, uh, we will uh, introduce a notion of uh, trace and dimension, which is going to be useful in the future as well. Uh, so. Uh, so suppose we have uh, X uh, uh, in some symmetric tensor category and uh, F from X to X is a morphism. Uh, then we can define trace of F. So the way uh, we do it, so we take the core evaluation. Uh, so we start with one. We do core evaluation X and that takes us to X tensor with a X dual. Uh, then uh, we uh, take C, X, X dual. This takes us to X dual cross X. Then we take one X dual tensored with F, and this takes us to X dual cross X. And then we do evaluation X, which takes us back to one. So the composition is an endomorphism of one, and we know endomorphisms of one, according to our last axiom, is K. So uh, what the, this is, is a certain scalar in K, which is called trace of F. And it is easy to see that what happens if X is a vector space. So then uh, suppose you have a basis uh, XI, uh, and then there is a dual basis XI dual of X dual. And then um, this is just one dimensional space. So what happens here, one goes over to what? To the sum of xi tensor with xi dual. Then we permute. So we get the sum of xi dual tensor xi. And we apply f. 
xi dual tensor fxi. And then this goes to sum over i xi dual with fxi. So this is the sum of the diagonal entries of f. So this is the ordinary trace of f. So usual trace. Uh, and in particular, uh, we have a notion of dimension uh, in general. So dimension of x is just the trace of the identity morphism, which is also an element of k. In particular, uh, for vector spaces, uh, dimension is the usual dimension. Regarded as an element of k. So it's a non-negative integer regarded as an element of k. In particular, it could be zero if n is divisible by the positive characteristic of k. The on the other hand, uh, and, and the same is true, so, so this is going to be in the category of vector spaces and therefore in any Tanakian category, because these trace and dimension are preserved under monoidal functors, since all this diagram is preserved under monoidal functors. Okay, uh, but then what happens in the super vector spaces? So if x equals to, uh, let's say, x0 plus x1 uh, is in super vector spaces, uh, and we have bases here, x i zero here and uh, x i one here. Then uh, this diagram will be like this: sum over i x i zero x i zero dual plus sum over j x i one x i one dual. Uh, and then uh, when we switch, well, there is nothing happens here, but here there will be a sign. So this goes to the sum over i x i uh, uh, zero tensor uh, dual tensor x i zero minus the sum over j x j one dual tensor with x j one. And, uh, and then uh, this is gonna be sum over i x i zero star f x i zero. Uh, so uh, uh, minus sum of x i one star f x i one and then this is the sum of x i zero star f x i zero minus sum x j one star f x j one so so this is what is called the super trace so if we write uh, x so f is equal to f zero 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 f one since it's a morphism, it has to preserve parity. So the super trace of F, or maybe trace of F, is equal to trace of F0 minus the trace of F1. And in particular, dimension of X is the difference of the dimension of X0 minus dimension of X1. So when I mean categorical dimension, I will write dim. And when I mean, uh, uh, dimension over k of x. So this is going to be dimension of x0 plus dimension of x1. And this belongs to z greater or equal to zero. And this belongs to k. Okay. So, so this is the super dimension. Uh, and in particular, we already see that if characteristic of k is zero and c is Tanakian, then uh, dimension of every object is non-negative. It's a non-negative integer. But on the other hand, if x equals to k uh, zero plus k in degree zero and degree one uh, is super space and dimension of x equals to minus one. And, and so this means it's not Tanaki. Well, this proof doesn't work in positive characteristic because minus one is equal to p minus one where p is a prime characteristic. So in that case, uh, the proof is uh, a tiny bit more involved, namely, uh, so, so suppose that characteristic of k equals to p bigger than two, because that's our condition here. Uh, then, uh, uh, so uh, there is a useful notion of an invertible object. So uh, object, uh, so this is in general. So H is in uh, C, which is a symmetric tensor category, or actually a tensor category in, is invertible if uh, uh, the map from one to X tends to X dual, which is coevaluation X is an isomorphism. 
So it's like an abstracting away the notion of a one dimensional representation or character. And this is equivalent, one can show it to saying that the evaluation X from X to tensor X to one is an isomorphism. Or it's equivalent to saying that X tensor X dual is isomorphic to one. All of these are isomorphic, uh, are equivalent, and they say that this uh, object is invert. And uh, so in a Tanakian category, ah, by the way, I forgot to mention that, uh, well, if you have a morphism F from X to, uh, to X, then there is an adjoint morphism from X dual to X dual, whose trace is equal to the trace of X. This is easy to show. And in particular, dimension of X dual equals to the dimension of X. Uh, and so in a Tanakian category, so invertible object is a, one that under fiber functor goes to a one dimensional vector space. Uh, so it is, its dimension is one for invertible X. Dimension of X equals one. But on the other hand, the dimension of this object is minus one. And it is invertible because it's one dimensional space, except that it is odd. So it's dual is the same thing. And when you tensor them, you get the unit. Super vector spaces, it can be minus one. And minus one is never, minus one can equal to a positive integer mod p, but it can never equal to one mod p if p is bigger than two. So this shows that this category isn't Tanaki and that this is a truly new example. Any questions up to this point? Okay, I, I will say a little bit about that. At the moment, if we just define it the way we defined, we cannot put a sign. So for, for characteristic two, we don't get anything new. Just super vector spaces is the same thing as vector spaces. But um, if you want to have, okay, super vector spaces has two objects. So if you want to have a kind of flat limit to characteristic two, uh, then uh, you don't want to have an answer that super vector spaces and characteristic two are just vector spaces. So there exists actually an example that I will mention uh, of a non-semi-simple category where which has only one simple object but has a self-extension, uh, which plays the role of uh, super vector spaces and characteristic two. And it's going to play an important role in my lecture. Other questions? Summarize like the idea you're trying to understand. So the, I, the reason we want to show that, because the, we said last time that all the knocking categories are the ones that are sort of represented by yeah. traditional uh, yes. space categories. Right. So by showing that we have some non knocking it's like, oh, we have some sort of representation theory that doesn't come just from. That's that. right. That's right. OK, so this is a new example. Uh, and then. Uh, so it doesn't admit a fiber functor to vector spaces. More precisely, there is a forgetful functor from super spaces to vector spaces, which forgets all these signs. Uh, but, but this functor is not symmetric because it doesn't. And so the question is, do we, does it mean that we actually have a lot of other examples? And uh, the answer is yes. Um, well, again, we can look at examples since we cannot map the super vector spaces over K. So all the categories we knew before, so this, this is the ideology, all the categories that we knew before could map into VEC K, VEC K. This was a Tanakian category. Now this one does not map there. So perhaps we should replace VEC K by this category and see what can map to this category. Right. And so, uh, so such categories are called super Tanakian. So this is the definition. C is super Tanakian if there exists F from C to super vector K. And again, we make assumptions that it is exact. Okay, and this in, of course includes Tanakian category because any functor into vector K can be composed with the inclusion of vector spaces into super vector spaces. So, so this includes uh, Tanakian categories and also it includes super vector spaces itself, because then we can just take the identity functor. Okay, and then uh, how can we <coughs> talk about such categories in a more traditional representation theoretical terms? Are they representation theory of anything? And uh, the answer is yes, and we can actually proceed exactly in the same way 
uh, as we did for usual Tanakian category. So the first uh, is uh, also a theorem of Delin uh, saying that if F exists, it is unique up to an isomorphism. It's not very hard theorem. Uh, and also uh, we can consider G, which is uh, out tensor of F underlined. And what this is, uh, this is a, a so-called uh, affine. So this means uh, that O of G is a, a, a super commutative of super algebra. It's the same thing as commutative uh, Hopf algebra in the category of super vector space. Well, actually, uh, I should say uh, in the int completion. In completion means that we allow infinite dimensional super vector space. Uh, so here I should mention that symmetric tensor categories is a type of axioms where you can do any kind of algebra. So any kind of uh, algebraic structure, linear algebraic structure makes sense in a symmetric tensor category. Because how you define linear algebraic structure? You uh, have some vector space A and then some maps. Like if you have a associative algebra, you have a map from A tensor A to A. If you have a Lie algebra, you also have a map from A tensor A to A. If you have a core algebra, you have a map from A to A tensor A. And then you can see uh, if you have, uh, for example, a uh, uh, braided algebra, you should also have a map from A tensor A to A tensor A and so on. And such things can uh, make perfect sense in any symmetric tensor category. So, so this is what it means to be a super affine super group scheme. And you can think of it in terms of functor of points. But in this case, for test rings, we should use not commutative rings, but super commutative rings, which are commutative commutative rings inside S that K. So everything we do should now be done inside here. So for every commutative ring R in super vec K or in the incompletion, have an ordinary group uh, G of R, which is going to be uh, atomorphism tensor of FR, where FR is a functor from C to the category of R module, which sends X to F of X tensor over K with R. Where this tensor product is inside super in, inside the category of super vector. So this is the same story as before. And so this is the group of points over R. And so let me give you an example. Uh, is uh, so this G of R is just home from this function algebra to R. A homomorphism of rings, algebras inside this case. And an example is the G, the most famous example of a supergroup scheme is the supergroup G L M N. So what is this group? We can define it. Well, you can define all the objects here, but the easiest thing to say is what is this functor? So, uh, so G of, of R. So our R is R0 plus R1. And uh, G of R is a matrix of the form A, B, C, D. This is N, this is M, M, N. Mn, where A belongs to A belongs to GLM of R zero, D belongs to GLN of R zero, and B and C are matrices, arbitrary matrices over R one, with with entries in R one. So these are even and these are on. And these two have to be invertible. And that ensures that the whole thing is invertible because B and C are actually nilpotent. Because uh, R1 is a nilpotent uh, 
uh, so elements of R1 are zero because square of every uh, element is zero. okay. So this is an example, but actually we also not only get this group, but we also get a particular element of this group. So uh, namely, we have a particular tensor automorphisms of uh, tensor automorphism of F, which is called the parity automorphism. Parity automorphism Z belonging to automorphisms tensor of F, uh, let's say over K, but actually over any ring. Uh, namely Z acts on F of X equals to one, zero, zero, minus one, where this corresponds to even elements and this corresponds to on F. So F of X is a super vector space, which is a sum of even and odd part and this element acts by one on the even part and or, uh, minus one on the odd part. So this element is has order at most two. It could be the identity if uh, we don't have any uh, supers. If we have an ordinary uh, then I can category. But otherwise it has a squares to one. And, um, and if you uh, take the adjoint action of this element on the function algebra, this acts by parity. So it acts by one on even functions and minus one on odd functions. So, uh, and uh, this defines a inclusion of a map from Z mod two to, to our group, the element of order at most two. And then uh, uh, we can define, so now we can define, uh, so suppose now G, is an affine supergroup scheme over K. Z in G uh, of K uh, is such that Z square equal one and I join Z at on or G by parity. Uh, rep GZ, which is finite dimensional representations of G. And representation means it's a co-module in the category of super vector spaces over this Hopf algebra on which, so, so the representations are always on super spaces and, uh, and, uh, and on which Z acts by the parity of the rate. So for example, in GLMN, we could take Z equal to one, but we could also take, the, so, but that would not work. So for example, uh, example of such parity element. So here is an example, G equals to GL MN. And then you, the, the element that works is this one, zero, zero minus one. So this acts by parity. And, uh, and so rep GZ is just representations of GL MN on super spaces. So it is not an arbitrary representation therefore. And in fact, so for, for you arbitrary representations or arbitrary superspaces, we have this function of change of parity where we switch odd and even part. We don't have this functor here. So for example, if uh, uh, we take the trivial representation on the trivial representation, this element should act by one. And therefore trivial, we only have the even trivial representation. We don't have the odd trivial representation. So we cannot change parity of the trivial representation. Okay, and so, uh, so this is what this category rep GZ is. And uh, here is the theorem. Uh, so first of all, uh, this category is super Tanakian. Well, that's obvious because it admits a forgetful functor into super vector spaces. And the second uh, statement is that let C be a super Tanakian category. Then uh, in fact, it is of this form. So namely, we can take its forgetful, its fiber functor, super fiber functor, as a uh, Tanakian, super Tanakian category, F from C to super vect K be 
a superfiber functor. which, as we know, is unique up to an isomorphism. Uh, let G be tensor automorphisms of F and Z in G of K, the parity automorphism. P is equivalent as a tensor, uh, symmetric tensor category to rep GZ. And, and the third is that the pair GZ is defined uniquely the same story. So it's uniquely determined and even in a slightly stronger sense up to inner automorphism. So it's exactly the same story as for uh, uh, ordinary Tanakian categories, except that we have the Z element. Uh, well, I mean, you can consider the tensor category of ZP graded vector spaces, but you cannot, put a, so if you put a sign rule, uh, what is important is you have minus one because you want to, this is a braiding, so uh, symmetric braiding, so it's supposed to square to one. If uh, you take some, uh, let's say you take a Z mod P graded vector spaces and you take P root of unity and raise it to the power M times N, you will get a braided category, but it won't be symmetric. Yes, we're coming to that. So the question is, are there tensor categories which are symmetric tensor categories, which are not super Tanaki. And uh, so we can start with characteristics. So that's exactly the question that I want to study. Are there symmetric tensor categories, which are not super Tanaki? And uh, so let me start with characteristic zero. The story actually here starts to diverge between characteristic zero and characteristic P. Well, the answer actually uh, is yes for all characteristics, but uh, in characteristic zero, uh, in order uh, to construct such examples, you have to take something very big. So, uh, so, so there is an obvious, uh, so, so, uh, uh, so there is a, 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 a obvious property of uh, super Tanakian categories, which is uh, I call moderate growth. And so what is moderate growth? This means the following, that for every, object x, there is a number cx, real number greater or equal to one, such that length of x to the power n is less than or equal than cx to the power n for every n greater or equal to zero. This is clearly satisfied in the super Tanakian case, you can take this constant to be the dimension over k of x which is dimension of x0 plus dimension of x1 regarded as an integer and in particular real number. Because it is clear that the length of this cannot be bigger than the vector space dimension. All the composition factor uh, are in particular vector space. So this has to be satisfied. And uh, yet there exist uh, examples. So we will discuss them maybe tomorrow. And this will connect to mods class. So there exists examples which are called the lean categories where this is violated. And uh, so these are categories that, that are obtained by interpolation of classical representation categories. Rep ST, rep GLT, rep OT, T. Or uh, so, so in, uh, in mods class, uh, uh, T uh, is uh, the parameter delta. And uh, uh, these categories are obtained by interpolating classical representation categories, so not non-integer uh, values of, uh, of the parameters, which lie in the ground field. And so if, uh, so uh, endomorphism algebras in these categories, as I will explain, are those algebras that were considered in, uh, in Mohn's class, which are, uh, for this category, it will be partition algebras. For this category, it's going to be wolf brower algebras. For this category, it's going to be ordinary Brouwer algebras. And we know that these categories, uh, these algebras are semi-simple when this parameter uh, from Mott's class, we know that these al algebras are semi-simple when this parameter is not an integer. In, in fact, for this one, it's even enough for the parameter to be not a positive, in, non-negative integer. And that means that away from those points, these are going to be semi-simple symmetric tensor categories. And we will show that they violate this condition. They grow, uh, instead of uh, exponential function, it grows like square root of n factorial, which grows faster than exponential. 
And uh, uh, so we, uh, we might want to restrict, if we want to remain in the realm of classical representation theory, we might want to restrict to categories of moderate growth. And in this case, the answer is, for characteristic zero is no. There is a theorem of Delaney. And in this case, this theorem is already not very non-trivial. And it says that any symmetric tensor category of moderate growth field of characteristic zero. So that's a deep theorem and I will not have time to explain the proof, but uh, it's, uh, it shows that uh, uh, we're reasonably close to a classification and we might wonder what happens in positive characteristics. And it turns out that in positive characteristics, the story is much more exciting and much more complicated. And uh, I will uh, uh, pass to that right now, but maybe there are any questions. So the schedule is the following. Today I will discuss positive characteristics uh, and in mostly, and uh, in uh, on uh, tomorrow we will discuss these delete categories. Yes. There will be a, qu a question about this deep theorem, which I don't know if uh, you have. Does, how does one use the moderate growth condition to construct such a superfiber company? Because that's how you would show that the category is supernatural. You want to have a super fiber functor. So for every object, you, you want to have a super vector space attached to this object. And uh, so, uh, so basically what you want to do is, so the super vector space has some dimension, let's say two, three. And then what you want to do is, uh, well, I mean, if you have a representation, you cannot, uh, it's going to be, for example, it could be irreducible. So there is a space of, uh, super dimension two, three, which is a reduce. But um, if you forget part of the structure, if you take a smaller group, uh, uh, then uh, you uh, may be able to split away, let's say a one dimensional space. So it will be a one dimensional plus two, two. And, you're, uh, and you can uh, make the group smaller by uh, taking a forgetful functor to partially forgetful functor to something. So you can construct such functors over some big ring. And then you use that, that ring has some characters and you eventually get a functor over K. So you prove, instead of proving that there is a fiber functor that completely splits it up into one dimensional spaces, you prove that there is a functor that splits away one dimensional thing. And then you, you keep going, but if you can go indefinitely, this will mean that the growth is uh, not modern. Mm -hmm. So at some point you have to end up with zero and that, uh, uh, basically means that you're done. And in this delin categories, what happens if you can still do this, but, but you can keep going and you will never get zero. Uh, like for example, you have this representations of ST. So if you have representations of SN for some integer N, big integer, like thousand. Well, there is a forgetful functor. There is a forgetful functor into symmetric group of si uh, for N equals 999 which splits away one dimensional space from the standard representation. And then you can go to 998 and then 997 and so on. And until you end up with, with zero. So you split away everything. However, if you do it for ST where T equals to pi, then you go to pi minus one to pi minus two, pi minus three, pi minus four, which is negative, but that's okay. Pi minus five and so on. And then you keep going and you never end. And so that, uh, that's what happens in the infinite growth. Okay, so let me now start with characteristic P. Uh, so so uh, the question now, are there uh, non super Tanakian symmetric tensor category of moderate growth in positive characteristic? P equals two, then by super Tanakian, I just mean Tanakian. The answer is yes. Struct such category. Uh, I. I will uh, first develop the theory of uh, semi simply of a symmetric tensor. So, first, a general thing. Uh, so, let C be a, a, a symmetric tensor category. And uh, N, uh, question of subspaces, N of XY inside home. XY uh, 
for any x and y in my cat. Uh, definition n is a tensor ideal composition and tensor product with arbitrary modules. So in a ring, we define an ideal as a subspace. In an algebra, we define an ideal as a subspace which is stable under multiplication with arbitrary elements. But in a tensor uh, category, we have two kinds of multiplication. We can compose a morphism with another morphism, or we can tensor it with another morphism. And it should be stable under both. And uh, in this case, uh, is a, the quotient is a monoidal category. So what is this quotient? Uh, See, uh, so home, so objects are the same. Objects of C mod N are the same as objects of C. Uh, but home in C mod N of, from X to Y is just the quotient of home X, Y modular N of X, Y. And it's a, it's a symmetric monoidal category. But it may not be, a, uh, uh, and it's also rigid. This is what is called a pseudo tensor category, symmetric pseudo tensor category. So this means uh, that this is the same thing as a tensor category, but we relax the condition that it is abelian, but only Carubian, not abelian. What does it mean? That it means it's closed. Uh, so Carubian means that we have a direct sum. And, we, uh, and it's closed under direct summons. And, uh, this is a rather weak condition because any ad additive category can be made into a Carubian one by taking so-called Carubian closure when we just simply adjoin these images of projectors and then adjoin direct sum. Defi uh, already, well, okay, additive category already has direct sums and then you just adjoin images of project. So, uh, but this, in this category, there is no notion of kernel, co kernel or image of amorphism in general. And this is something that it is not easy to add if it's not already there. Okay, so it might not be a symmetric tensor category on the nose, but it is a slightly weaker thing. thing. Symmetric pseudo tensor, tensor category. Uh, and, but, but then there is a specific tensor ideal uh, that we will be interested in. So example, uh, uh, so we say that uh, amorphism F from X to Y is negligible if for every morphism the other direction G from Y to X, we have the trace of FG equals to zero which is of course equivalent to saying that the trace of GF equals to zero because the trace of FG is equal to the trace of G. So this is a very important definition in many areas of mathematics, but it appeared first in the theory of motives and it was introduced by, uh, and, uh, and then the lemma says that negligible morphisms, and so this is uh, easy uh, to prove, so I will not uh, get into this, but um, if you have a, a negligible morphism and you compose it with any morphism, you get a negligible morphism. That's pretty easy to show and tensor product. And uh, then uh, definition is the semi-simplification of a symmetric tensor category C is uh, C mod N equals to C bar, where N is the tensor ideal of negligible morphisms. And then if we take that quotient, actually it's much better than here. We will actually get a symmetric tensor category and moreover a semi-simple one. C bar is a semi-simple symmetric tensor category. Simple objects are in decomposable of dimension not equal to zero in K. Simple category is a category where every object is a direct sum of simple objects. Uh, so we don't have this pseudo tensor thing here. It is actually an honest tensor category, which is in addition semi-simple. Uh, I will explain the proof of this because it is somehow central to this whole subject. But I should mention that if C is already semi-simple, then of course N equals zero because there is no negligible morphisms in this case. Uh, and, uh, and then C bar will be 
just C. If C is semi-simple, then N equals zero and C bar equals to C. But uh, to prove this theorem, what I will need to do is I need to describe explicitly what these negligible morphisms are. And in fact, there is a very simple description which allows us to prove this theorem. So let me uh, uh, explain this. So this is called Benson's lemma, proved it in some setting of modular representation theory 40 years ago, but it actually applies in general. And uh, in fact, it may have been known earlier, maybe to Grotendieck or to his students who are working on the theory of motives, but it's published in by Benson in 1980. First of all, let X and Y. So first of all, I should remind you that in the categories that we consider, uh, which are Artinian, there is a, uh, which are co-modules over a co-algebra, there is Krull-Schmidt theorem, which says that any object has a unique decomposition up to isomorphism into direct sum of indecomposable. So now let X and Y in C be indecomposables. Uh, F to X to, from X to Y. It, well, it's easier to say what it means for it to be not negligible. This is, it happens if and only if uh, uh, dimension of X is not zero and F is an isomorphism. So it's hard for a morphism to be non-negligible. It has to satisfy these both conditions. And second, if X is a direct sum from I equals one to N X I, and Y is direct sum from G A equals one to M Y G, and X I Y G in decomposable, and F, which is uh, F I G, uh, a morphism from X to Y, where these are the matrix coefficients, so fij goes from xi to yj, then f is negligible if and only if fij is negligible for all i and g. Exactly, so that's exactly why. Uh, so let, let me now explain. I will prove this lemma after the break, but let me now explain the proof of the theorem using this lemma. The theorem uh, uh, will be the following. So, uh, so suppose, uh, so, so we look at the, uh, suppose that X is indecomposable in C and we look at the algebra and the morphisms of X, okay? Now this is a local algebra because this is indecomposable, right? So, so, so this means that in the morphisms of X is uh, uh, K plus M where M is, uh, uh, and now uh, we, we see that uh, M uh, is uh, N of X, X. The dimension of X is not zero. And then N of X, X is the entire algebra and X. If dimension of X is zero. Uh, so, so, uh, so if dimension of X is not zero, then negligible means not an isomorphism. And in a local ring, not being an isomorphism is the same as lying in this nilpotent ideal M. If dimension of X is zero, then all morphisms are negligible. So what this means is that in, uh, in the semi-simplification category, well, let me call it the image X bar of X, which is simply X, but regarded as an object of C bar, uh, satisfies from, from X bar to X bar equal K, if dimension of X is not zero and zero when dimension of X is. And so this implies, and, and also the, uh, home from X bar to Y bar is zero unless X is isomorphic to Y, if they're in the component. And so this means exactly that we have Schur's lemma, as you said. So this implies that C bar is semi simple with simple objects as stated. Namely, if X is an indecomposable object, which is, has dimension not zero, then it becomes a simple object. But if it has dimension zero, then it becomes zero because home from this object to itself in, uh, uh, in the semi simplified category is zero. So this comes out of this limb. And so after the break, I will explain the proof of this lemma, and then we will see how 
we can construct some explicit examples of semi-simplifications, and this will immediately give us a counterexample to the Lin theorem and characteristic P. Yes, absolutely, because uh, by definition, symmetric tensor category was a, uh, a, a Cartesian category, so category of co-modules over co-algebra. But even in a pseudo tensor category, it, it is still satisfying because if you have a Carubian category where endomorphism algebras where home from X to Y is finite dimensional, you still have Krull Schmidt theorem. And this Benson's lemma actually also holds for a pseudo uh, tensor category where a uh, trace of uh, uh, any nilpotent endomorphism is zero. That's not automatic, but uh, for pseudo tensor categories that arise in real life, uh, from tensor categories, this is true. And, and for them, this lemma and the whole procedure works.